Greetings students. In this lecture, we will see the trajectory planning for robot manipulators. So what is trajectory planning? It means the way that the robot is moved from one location to the another in a controlled manner while avoiding collisions over time. So this can be computed both in discrete and continuous methods. And this trajectory planning is a major area in robotics as it gives way to autonomous vehicles. To accomplish the task, a manipulated must have motion control and it has to follow the pre-planned path. And it describes the requisite motion of the manipulator as a time sequence of joint or end effector locations and derivatives of the locations. So this can be generated by interpolating or approximating the desired path by a polynomial function and it has a time based sequence locations and it serves as a reference input or control set points. So next is the objectives of trajectory planning. So the goal of trajectory planning is to generate the reference inputs to the motion control system which ensures that the manipulator executes the planned trajectories. Next is what is the difference between the path and the trajectory. So a path defines a sequence of robot configurations in a particular order without regard to the timing of these configurations. And the trajectory is it is concerned about when each path of the path must be attained. Thus it specifies the timing. So path purely describes the geometric description of motion and the trajectory uh, which represents in both spatial and tempor temporal uh, representation of motion. So as the trajectory specifies the timing, so this can be dis specified in terms of velocities or acceleration at each point for joints of the manipulator. So next is the what is point to point motion and continuous path motion. So point to point motion which teaches initial and final points, intermediate path is not critical and it is computed by the controller. So applications here included are moving of parts, spot welding, automated loading and unloading of machines, pick and place motion. All these uh, comes under the point to point motion trajectory planning and uh, next is the continuous path motion the second picture shows the continuous example for continuous path motion so this is used when there is a need to follow a complex path through 3d space so possibly at high speeds for example uh, you can uh, think of a spray painting welding polishing and this points generally taught by manual lead through with high speed automatic sampling. So first it checks whether the application is based on point to point motion path or continuous mo motion path. Then the user defines the desired trajectory by the number of parameters and a polynomial function is identified to approximate that trajectory. So this trajectory planning which consists of generating a time sequence of values of different parameters by the polynomial which interpolates the tra trajectory and every manipulator has a least capability to move from an initial location to final desired location that is from one point to the another point kinematics and dynamics of the manipulator which governs the transition of posture with actuators exiting the desired uh, tax so whether it uh, uses the inverse kinematics for finding the corresponding path for the joints in the joint space or uh, it uses the inverse kinematics for finding the initial and final joint position in the joint space. So it used both the Cartesian space techniques as well as the joint space techniques to compute it. And as no limits must be violated and no unmodel behavior should be executed, it is necessary to devise planning algorithms that generate the smooth uh, trajectories. Next is robot motion planning. So it could be a path planning or a trajectory planning. In path planning, it has path description, path constraints that is obstacles and these constraints are imposed by robot dynamics.
and the second one is the trajectory planning where joint trajectories uh, in terms of position velocity and acceleration is identified so in the first method we plan a path in cartesian space and it used the inverse kinematics for finding the corresponding path for the joints in the joint space and this uses the cartesian space techniques and the second method it used the inverse kinematics for finding the initial and the final joint position in the joint space and it plan a path in the joint space Now, since computing the inverse kinematics in real time, time consume this uh, method one is time consuming and uh, robot efficiency may be affected. So when this is used is when a specific end affected trajectory is required. In that time this method is useful. Example uh, in the say in the case of arc welding or the electrode is required to follow the seam precisely. In that case, method one is useful. And then the second method, it determines the initial and final joint positions. So the path for all joints can be easily planned in the real time. In this case, there is no need for the forward and inverse kinematics recalculation. There are some of the terminologies which is used in trajectory planning are uh, listed here. First one is configuration. So it's specification of all variables which defines the system completely is a configuration and the configuration space is a set of all configurations and free configuration is the one that does not collide with obstacles and you have free space which is denoted by f it is a set of all free configurations and it's a subset of the configuration space you have not points set of intermediate locations between the start and goal positions on the trajectory and you have a spline which is which is the smooth function that passes through a set of uh, knot points and path update rate this is the rate at which the trajectory points are computed at runtime next is the path planning problem so here the problem statement could be we have to compute a collision free path for a rigid or articulated moving object among the obstacles and here the input is uh, geometry of a moving object here it is a, a robot or a molecule and obstacles then we have to see how does the robot move so it is a kinematics of the object robot that is uh, degrees of freedom and also its position and orientations which will have its initial and goal robot configurations and obviously the output will be the continuous sequence of the collision free robot configurations which connects the initial and goal configuration next is the trajectory planning problem so the problem statement uh, could be a specified cartesian space trajectory uh, into a appropriate joint position reference values and here the input is cartesian space path so the path can constraints which includes velocity and acceleration limits and also its uh, singularity analysis so the output here is a series of uh, joint position or velocity reference values uh, to uh, send to the controller next is the trajectory planning problem so the problem statement uh, could be a specified cartesian space trajectory uh, into a appropriate joint position reference values and here the input is cartesian space path so the path con constraints which includes velocity and acceleration limits and also its uh, singularity analysis so the output here is a series of uh, joint position or velocity reference values uh, to uh, send to the controller so the trajectory planning is carried out both in Cartesian space and joint space. So Cartesian space uh, which uses the task space uh, coordinates that is the Cartesian space coordinates and joint space uses the joint angle values. Motion between two points is known at all times and it is controllable in case of uh, Cartesian space and here this is used for point to point motion and in Cartesian it is easy to visualize the trajectory and uh, 
in joint space scheme first order and second order derivatives must be continuous where Cartesian uh, space it considers the obstacles in the workspace and in joint space is does does not account for the obstacle and in Cartesian space inverse kinematics problem has to be solved computational complexity is there it reduces trajectory sampling rate in real time operation and trajectory tracking accuracy decreases in this and there is a there are problems with singularity in joint space obtains the joint variables for each path point by inverse kinematics or uh, by teaching by showing technique and non-linear nature of manipulators kinematic model in case of joint space scheme then how the trajectory planning is done given the in defector position you have to find the joint angles so first fit the trajectory to move in defector from one position to another through one joint angle to another joint angle this can be done by two ways first fix the trajectory to end defector and it has to follow the trajectory the second one is to plan at the joint angle level that is and fit the trajectory at that joint level this picture represents the Cartesian space trajectory planning the first one shows the sequential motions of a robot to follow a straight line and the second picture uh, shows the Cartesian coordinates which force the robot to itself and also it requires a change in the joint angles the third picture shows the path which is not in the workspace and the fourth is it shows the flip between the configurations and the final one shows the um, initial and goal positions in different solution branches so considering these we have various trajectory functions and in joint space trajectory functions could be cubic polynomial nth order polynomial linear trajectory function and the Cartesian space trajectory functions could be parameterized path description straight line path circular path position planning and orientation planning consider the case one of polynomial trajectory function so here initial and final val values of joint angles are known and angular velocities at beginning and end of the cycle are equal to zero so at t equal to t i initial value which is equal to zero and theta equal to theta i and theta dot which is equal to zero at t equal to t f the final value is also considered to be zero and theta equal to theta f and theta dot will be equal to zero now let us consider the cubic polynomial theta of t which is equal to c naught plus c1 t plus c2 t square plus c3 t cube where the c naught c1 c2 c3 are the coefficients now differentiate theta of t with respect to time to get uh, angular velocity so you will get theta dot of t which is equal to the constant will be 0 and c1 plus 2 c2 t plus 3 c3 t square now applying the initial conditions to angular displacement and angular velocity equations we get c0 which is equal to theta i and c1 will be 0 also c0 plus c1 tf plus c2 tf square plus c3 tf cube which is equal to theta f and c1 plus 2 c2 tf plus 3 c3 tf square which is equal to 0 so solving the uh, above equations we get c2 and c3 respectively where c2 is equal to 3 of theta f minus theta i by tf square and c3 is minus 2 of theta f minus theta i by tf cube and finally substituting the values of c0 c1 c2 c3 we get the theta of t now consider the case 2 where initial and final values of joint angles are known and the angular velocities at beginning and end of the cycle are non-zero here so which means uh, previously theta theta dot which is equal to zero 
and here uh, at initial value theta dot will be theta i theta dot i and theta dot for the final value will be theta dot f again consider the same cubic polynomial and if you differentiate with respect to uh, theta of t we will get the theta dot of t which is same as that of your uh, previous equations now applying the initial conditions to angular displacement and angular velocity equations c0 will be theta i and c1 will be theta dot i previously it was 0 and c2 and c3 varies so c2 will be 3 of theta f minus theta i by tf square minus 2 by tf into theta dot i minus 1 by t theta dot f and c3 will be 2 of theta f minus theta i by tf cube plus 1 by tf square into theta dot f minus theta dot i so you can assume two cases based on the polynomial trajectory function to compute the trajectory path now let us take this example a single link robot with a revolute joint is motionless at theta s 20 degree it is desired to move the joint in a smooth manner to theta s 80 degree in 4 seconds find a suitable cubic polynomial to generate this motion and bring the manipulator to rest at the goal so this is your case one where initial and final values of joint angles are given and angular velocities at beginning and end of the cycle are here it is equal to zero so your initial value is 20 degree and your final value is 80 degree and the time is given as 4 seconds. So here you will be considering at t is t i which is equal to 0 and theta is theta i which is 20 degree is given and theta dot will be 0. And at t is equal to t f the time is 4 seconds and theta is theta f that is your destination is 80 degree and theta dot here it will be 0. So this is your case 1. So applying the cubic polynomial theta of t and substituting the values you will get the cubic polynomial which will generate the motion and which is bringing the manipulator to rest at the goal. Next consider another example a single link robot is stationary at theta is 15 it has to move to theta is equal to 75 degree in 3 seconds. Fit a cubic polynomial that represents the trajectory to be followed. Here considering the another way planning at the joint level then trajectory has to be fit at the joint level. So having this we will be finding the coefficients c0, c1, c2, c3 and substitute in theta of t to get the position. So differentiate with respect to theta of t you will get the velocity and uh, differentiation again with respect to theta dot of t will get the acceleration. So this will give the trajectory path to be followed. Thank you.